On Thanksgiving Day 1900, a major football game was about to kick off in San Francisco. A large group of people, who had not found seats in the stadium, climbed onto the roof of a building to watch the important match. No one could have imagined the dark and macabre events surrounding this fateful event. The horrifying collapse of the roof, the fiery fate of those who fell, and the shocking aftermath that unfolded. Brace yourself for a chilling tale of tragedy and mystery that will leave questioning the true horrors that lurk beneath the surface of a seemingly normal day. Thomas, a 28-year-old with a twisted sense of humor, told his mother that he was out for a while, promising to return in time for the Thanksgiving feast. Little did he know that fate had something far more sinister in store for him. You see, Thomas lived in a working-class neighborhood in San Francisco, where not much excitement ever happened. But on this day, the atmosphere crackled with anticipation. The reason? The highly anticipated football game between Stanford University and the University of California was about to kick off in Thomas's very own district. Can you imagine the thrill, friends? Over 20,000 people were expected to cram into the stadium, hungry for the spectacle that awaited them. Thomas, despite lacking the funds for a ticket, was determined not to miss this incredible event. With a mischievous grin on his face, grabbed his jacket and headed out the door. He knew he had to find a way to witness the game, even if it meant bending the rules a little. Oh, the lengths we go to for a taste of excitement. Thomas's plan was simple, sneak into the stadium amidst the crowd of eager fans. But as he arrived at the gates, reality hit him like a punch to the gut. The stadium was already full hours before the opening kickoff. There was no room to breathe, let alone find a decent spot to watch the game. Even those with tickets were left scratching their heads, wondering where they could find a view. Thomas and his close friend Charles, who had coincidentally arrived at the same time, exchanged disappointed glances. They realized that sneaking in would be pointless if there was nowhere to see the action. But fear not, for Thomas and Charles were not ones to give up easily scanned their surroundings, desperately seeking an alternative. And then, like a beacon of hope, they spotted it. Across the street, a group of people rushed towards a massive white brick factory building. Ladders were being placed against its sides, and people were climbing up. Curiosity peaked, Thomas and Charles decided to investigate. The factory building stood tall, five stories high, with windows and fire escapes dotting its exterior. It seemed that these daring individuals were trying to get a good vantage point to watch the match. Without hesitation, Thomas and Charles made up their minds. They would join this audacious group claim a spot atop the factory building. With adrenaline coursing through their veins, Thomas and Charles left the stadium behind and sprinted across the street. They climbed the ladders, clambered through windows, and ascended the fire escapes until they reached the rooftop, a staggering 55 feet above the ground. And there, my friends, they found themselves in a prime position, with a perfect view of the game unfolding below. As the time goes by, the rooftop filled with hundreds of people who had the same idea. The excitement palpable, the atmosphere electric. The game finally began, and the crowd in the stadium erupted with cheers and music. The sound easily reached the rooftop, fueling the frenzy. Thomas and Charles, caught up in the moment, chants, screams, and wild celebrations. It was chaos, my friends, and they reveled in it. 
but little did they beneath the surface of this thrilling spectacle, a dark and tragic fate awaited them. Let's dive deeper into their harrowing journey. The game was in full swing, the stadium alive with cheers and music. The crowd below, oblivious to the tragedy that would unfold just a hundred feet away, reveled in the spectacle. But as the minutes ticked by, sound pierced the air, shattering the euphoria that had engulfed the rooftop. Thomas and Charles spun around, their eyes searching the source of the noise. Their hearts raced as they witnessed people on the far side of the roof scrambling to escape. Panic spread like wildfire, and confusion gripped the crowd. What was happening? Who had caused this sudden chaos? Before Thomas, Charles, and the others could make sense of the situation, a deafening crack echoed through. The floor beneath them gave way, and in an instant, they plummeted towards the building's floor, 55 feet below. The world turned into a blur of screams and fallen bodies as the roof collapsed. But fate can be a fickle mistress, my friends. As Thomas fell, his desperate grasp found solace in a wooden beam that stretched across the factory. He clung to it for dear life, saving himself from a fatal plunge. His heart pounded in his chest as he looked around, taking in the horrifying scene. The screams of the fallen echoed through the air, mingling with the chaos and panic below. Thomas's eyes darted, searching for his friend Charles amidst the devastation. And there, amidst the twisted wreckage, he spotted Charles, one of the fortunate few who had landed on a brick structure in the middle of the factory. This brick smaller structure right in the middle was like 40 feet tall, and so only 15 feet under the roof. Relief washed over Thomas as he saw Charles seemingly unharmed. But as he watched, horror gripped his soul. The survivors, including Charles, began to emit primal screams, their bodies contorting in unimaginable ways. Loud popping sounds began coming out of their body. What could cause such agony? What sinister secret lay within the factory's brick structure? It was then that the truth revealed itself, my friends. The factory they had climbed upon was not just an ordinary building. It was a glass furnace, a place of intense heat and unimaginable danger. The survivors, those spared from the fall, were now engulfed in flames. The intense heat of the furnace caused their bodies to ignite, turning them into human popping torches. The crackling of the flames mingled with their agonized screams, creating a symphony of horror that echoed through the factory walls. Thomas, frozen in disbelief, watched as Charles rolled up, his body descending the curved side of the furnace in a cruel twist and disappearing into a crack in the fiery depths. Silence followed, leaving Thomas and the other survivors in a state of shock. You didn't come here to watch a video and then leave like nothing happened, did you? Leave a comment and like the video to show that you are a real fan. Thomas had managed to escape the collapsing rooftop, only to find himself amidst the chaos and suffering of the survivors. The screams of the fallen echoed in his mind, haunting him with their pain and despair. But little did he know that his own fate was sealed to be entwined with the horrors that surrounded him. As Thomas clung to the wooden beam, his grip weakened by the heat and the weight of the tragedy, fate dealt him a cruel blow. Sweat dripped from his brow, his slipping ever so slightly. In a moment of desperation, he lost his grip, and his body plummeted further into the factory. Thomas landed with a thud onto the furnace exterior, his feet first, followed by his stomach and face. The impact was jarring, but it was the searing heat that engulfed him that truly sealed his fate. Flames licked at his body, igniting his clothes and flesh as he let out a blood-curdling scream that echoed through the factory. The flames consumed Thomas, his agonized screams blending with the crackling of fire. In his final moments, he experienced the same as the survivors before him, becoming a macabre torch in the fiery inferno. 
the glass factory, once a place of creation, had become his fiery tomb. The intense heat of the furnace made it impossible for anyone to approach, leaving Thomas and the others to suffer in isolation. The outside world remained oblivious. The game inside the stadium continued, the cheers and celebrations drowning out the screams of the injured people. It wasn't until the victorious fans spilled out onto the streets, their joy turning to horror, that the true extent of the catastrophe was revealed. The burnt and disfigured bodies lying on the ground served as a grim reminder of the price paid for a moment of excitement. A total of 23 people would be killed during this roof collapse and dozens and dozens more would be horribly injured and disfigured. The Thanksgiving game, once a source of joy, had transformed into a nightmare of unimaginable proportions. The echoes of that fateful day continue to reverberate through history, etching this tragedy as one of the darkest moments in sports history. Join the channel and leave a like as we continue to uncover the secrets that lie within the ashes, unearthing the forgotten horrors that shape our world. Together, we will navigate the darkness and shed light on the untold stories that linger in the shadows. Thanks for watching.